Yo, YouTube people in the house. We're hanging up, hanging out. We're hanging up. We're not hanging up. We hanging. Hanging. Remember these? You ever seen one of these before? We're Old hanging school. out. Yeah, I had to unplug it too in case it doesn't ring. In yeah. case it does ring. <laughs> anyway, what's going on, guys? We are about ready to get this party started here tonight. I'm going to do a quick microphone check here and make sure that Rob and I sound okay. Mic check, one, two, three. What's up, Big D? You guys let us know before we get there if it sounds all right. Just checking the levels. All right, sounds good. Yeah, we don't have a whole lot of adjustment because of our cheap system that we use here. And with Rob and I both being remote, it's not the easiest to... Uh, adjust the levels you know people that do this together it's much easier but we we separated by a few uh, hundred miles actually what more than that a couple thousand right yeah, uh 1500 s something like that about about 16 hours worth about halfway across the country yeah yeah rob's in the central part i'm in the east i'm on the east coast I'm a west sider on the east coast. What's up with that? <laughs> the south meets east. That's right. I can't get over that. So, people in the chat room, before we get started here with the show, uh, we'll let you guys know that have sent the super chats. Thank you very much for that. We're going to talk about that a little bit here. We're going to give you guys a shout out at the end of the show. And, um, yeah, we appreciate your support. Thank you so much for helping us out. We'll talk a little bit about what, the support goes towards and we've already kind of paid for some of the SoundCloud storage, which helps store all our podcasts. That's very awesome. So we'll talk about that. And we've got, um, some other things to talk about. If you guys have questions, go ahead and type them in if you want. Um, but when we get to the end of our questions, if you guys have any, we'll answer them then too. We'll try. I'll leave the hard ones yeah. for Rob. It, leave me all the easy ones, but resurface them at the end. That, that way we see them, because cause, y'all talk so much, we don't know what you be doing. That's for sure. You know what I just realized, Rob? I don't yeah. have a slide for today. That's, it's just going to be have to be your, your, beautiful, your beautiful face. I'll be slacking. <laughs> Let me pull it up real quick and see if I've got like a generic one I can use. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to make this on time. I had a different obligation tonight. But I did it. I was able to make it home in time. I don't think I have a plain one. I think they've all got episode numbers on them. Oh, well. Uh, I might have, have you, one. Have you got a plain one? I might have one. Let me see. Oh, I think that's right. I, I sent it to you, didn't I? Yeah, I Dropbox yeah. it to you. It's in the 12-volt talk Dropbox, right? Yes, I believe so. Oh, it should be in there under logos. <sighs> I don't know if I can get it from here. Let's see. Give me just a second, guys. Sorry about this. I'm opening it up right now. Oh, whoops. I didn't want to go to drop.com. We are usually more prepared than this. Okay, I got us. We're going to have some stuff on top, though. So can you share all now? Yes, let me... Well, I got to make sure it's the correct application window. I think I got it here, too. I've already got it pulled up either way. All right, you go ahead and share yours then. Okay, let me do it. Let's see. We've got two of them. There we go. Yeah, it's going to have some stuff on the top, but I'll save it. This is amateur hour, guys. We're usually a little bit more prepared than this. Again, it is completely my fault. Okay, here we go. We're about ready to rock this house. All right. There we, we go. We've got intro this week. I think it's my turn. All right. All right. Let me share the screen and we'll get this party started. What did I do? Hit the wrong button. Oh, okay. Here we go. Five. Four, twenty-one, thirty-two, twenty-eight, 
12 volt talk episode 44 audience question and answer what's going on guys this is Derek from Wilson Audio Labs here as always with my co-host Mr. Robert Vega from High Five Vega land how's it going Rob what's going on we are here to answer questions you got the questions. questions we got the answers you got the hard questions we're not going to answer it. Something like that, right? We, we can't guarantee the validity of our answers. Right. But we can answer questions. We will try our best to answer with 100% accuracy. But the chances are there's going to be a little bit of uh, of, of waviness, failure in yeah. that 100% part. We'll get as close to 100% as we possibly can. Guaranteed. Well, the, the, the dirty little secret is all of you probably know more than we do. That is a dirty secret. We shouldn't tell them that. <laughs> they shouldn't know that. They'll know we're posers. Yeah. We're just bald heads and almost bald head guys sitting here talking about stuff we know nothing about. Chopping it up. But hey, we learn from the best, man. BS your way through life. Can make it. Can make it make good. Make it till you make it. All right. So we got some news to talk about. The chat room tonight has been hitting us up with Super Chats. If you guys don't know what Super Chats are, if you join us live Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, we do the show live. We try to interact as much as we can with the chat room. If we don't do it during the show, we do it before and we do it after. But the Super Chats is a way that the audience can kind of help us out. What they do is send a little bit of money, you know, pocket change, $2, $5, 10 50, 100, whatever you got sitting in your pocket. Some people got deeper pockets than others. But um, we greatly appreciate these. What we do is Rob and I pay for SoundCloud to store the podcast. SoundCloud allows us to share to Spotify and Google Play and all those places. And it creates the RSS feeds and all that. And it allows us to keep all the archive. They have a free version, which only lets you keep like five five episodes or something and we said no we want them all there in case people want to go back because i know they want to listen to our content rob's like yep they don't but no we want to have them all so anyway soundcloud is like 150 bucks a year so with you guys support we've paid for two years so we paid last year and already prepaid for 2019 right rob yeah and it feels so good it feels good now so we have some visions and you guys this bothers me that we don't have like lower thirds and there's other things you can do with the more advanced streaming software so i think that's the next thing we're going to save up for but that's pretty expensive it's like 800 bucks or something for the the software that allows to put everything together there's some free stuff out there which we've tried it works okay but again since rob and i are remote it's a little more difficult to use the free software i know Everyday Audios uses the free stuff, um, and it works okay for them. But I've noticed before when they have guests on there, sometimes it gets a little choppy. So we're trying to find a way to do a little bit more professionally. So that's what we're saving for. So just wanted to let you guys know that we appreciate you know your support. We haven't really done a Patreon page. I don't think we're going to. Rob and I have talked about it, and you know we pretty much decided we've got our own Patreon pages uh, for Wilson Audio Labs, Old School Stereo, and then Rob for High Five Vega. So we're just trying to keep that all separate. And you guys are that are supporting us there, we greatly appreciate that too. Appreciate that too. Yeah. If I can talk tonight. And, and we don't want to drain y'all. This, yeah, y'all are very fun, generous. Fun we greatly, project. If, you know, if just everybody that was a su- subscriber gave like $1 a month, I wouldn't have to do my day job anymore. I could do amp test all day, every day. But, you know, you got people that'll... Do ten dollars, and you got people that I ain't paying nothing for that. Sorry, suck up, big dummy. He ha- keeps having Fred Sanford on there, so I don't know. And I got people that complained last time about the slap contest. Guys, like I really like your videos, but that slap contest, it's it just really disturbs me when I see that guy get smacked. I'm like, well, that's how I felt, man. I spent my hard-earned money on that mess, and and, and that amp did horrible, and I was like, kapaya. That's what I felt right beside my head. Anyway, sorry. Didn't mean to go for rant, but that, that's how it is. Um, we talked about the OSS meet last week, Rob, right? I don't know if there's yep. anything else we wanted to – I think you and I both – Rob has a Patreon-exclusive 
video. So if you're on Rob's Patreon, you can see his um, video of the old school meet. So check that out. Go subscribe to his Patreon so you can see that. Is there anything else you want to say about that? No, I think we're good. I think we covered it pretty much last week. Yep. And uh, I'm going to release one coming out this weekend about the uh, the meet. So it's a couple demos and just talking about how the meets go. So cool. Let's move on to the Q&A session. So yes, we, post, we post it up in Facebook, uh, YouTube. Uh, Rob did it on his YouTube page. I did it on mine in the community section. And we also did it on the 12 Volt Talk page. We did it on the Facebook page. We did it on our own walls on Facebook. We're just trying to get all kind of questions. Y'all got some good ones. So we're going to go through the ones we found. You guys keep asking down here. And uh, if, you, if we yeah. can find some other good ones that we know how to answer, we'll do that. So, so let's start off. I got the question for you. Why are you testing $50 junk amps? When you could be testing old school gold. I agree. 100%. <laughs> and I think we talked about this last time, Rob, and you, you and I have talked about this before as well. It, it's all about what the majority of people want to see. Okay. So, you know, I, enough, I like nothing more than testing the old school amps. I've talked about the video about the Cambridge Soundworks little suitcase boombox thing many, many times, but I spent like 20 hours working on that video, and it's one of my lowest viewed videos. And to me, it was very unique, it was very cool, and you know, stuff like some of the old school amps do okay, but for the most part, they just don't do that well view-wise. Uh, Steve Mead, when I talked to him a couple years ago, about, I said, dude, why don't you do more amp dyno tests? He said... They just don't get the views. And even even the interesting popular stuff a lot of times doesn't get as good of views as like the subwoofers, right, Rob? Because you I mean you got that last Titan one you got some pretty good views on about your sub box. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh people want to see the flex. It it's obvious they they show with their eyes what they want to see versus what they don't want to see. Yeah, but you know, trying to make it interesting i guess I, I try my best not all the amp dyno tests i do do i show like in car measurements or i try to always show speaker tests though as much as possible i didn't do it with the last ball punk blue point whatever you call them uh, just because they didn't push the subs very well but um yeah i try to make it a little more interesting than just an amp dyno test because just watching numbers kind of gets kind of boring but I do like to test the old school stuff. That's why I don't do as much as um, as you guys would like to see, I'm sure, just because it doesn't get the interest. So yeah. I'm trying to build the audience up and get a lot of people watching. Then I'll drop the old school stuff. So y'all got to watch this. Yeah, and hey, you know that that's the passion project. So you put them out when you can. I just put them out. You know, I, on my test, I just try to fill in what's not out there. So if I'm doing Amped on, I want to do something that, I haven't seen a video of. We may have the ESX. We already had results for it on amp performance dot de, but we didn't have a video of it. I said, you know what? I'll put a video up. Let everyone check it out. And stuff like that for me as well doesn't get as many views, but it gives me content, you know, to keep going. And it's something that a lot of people do want to see, just not the majority. Right. Yeah. When we say a lot, I mean we're talking thousands versus tens of thousands. You know, usually. Right. But, um, and again, we're obviously not doing this right now for the money because it's not our primary jobs, but we would, we'd like this to be our primary job someday. So, you know, we're, we're trying to create the path to make that happen. So that's what we're working on, but it's not, I'm not testing them because I'm not, not testing them because I don't want to. It's just, that's the reason. So Rob, I'm going to hit you up with this one. We can modify the numbers a little bit, but. Why don't we see, like, you test, like, 2,000-watt, 3,000-watt amps? What's the holdup? I mean, you got the you got the little handheld amp dyno. What's going on? Why don't you test bigger amps? So if, if anybody watched my last video, the ESX, that's only about a 900-watt amp. But that thing's a Class AB, and it pulls some current. And right now I have a Cosell. It's 120-amp continuous 150 amp burst power supply. I do have a battery backup bank 
that I run with it if if needed. I done the two ohm stereo test and I was pulling 167 amps at two ohm stereo. So I had to I had to hook up the uh, battery bank so I could do two ohms mono, one ohm mono, and even at one ohm mono I was still around you know like 12.5 volts. So which they rate that amp at 12 volts, so it wasn't so bad, but it, it can get uh it can get tricky for there. Plus, big amps cost big money, and people. You know, they might think that that you or me are getting these ants for free all the time. And I do have the ESX was sent to me by somebody. You know, I'll I'll send it back to them. But a lot of these amps we buy ourselves, so there's there's that to consider. Yeah, that's a great point. And you know, the other thing is, um, you know, I've got eight excess power D fourteen hundreds, and I've got a couple of the IntelliChargers. So eight 14 volt batteries, you would think you can test, you know, pretty big, five, 6,000 watts. It pulls the voltage down pretty far when you're testing an amp that big, because I don't leave the, uh, the power supply on, because the problem is with 14 volt batteries, when you run it in the power supply mode or the charge mode, it's charging the batteries at 16.5 to 16.8 volts. A lot of these amps don't want inputs more than 16 uh, some of them have the input filter caps or 16 volt input caps, so you don't want to go higher than that, or you're going to have some, some explosions. Um, so I usually charge up my bank, the battery bank, fully, turn it off, and then start the dyno test. So it start around 15.4 volts, depending on how big the amplifier is, it'll drain it down. So you know people want to see 8,000 watt, 10k stuff like that. Even eight batteries is not enough, but we're going to talk about something a little further down the list here of Q&As that may be enough. And we'll find out about that coming up soon. All right, so let's get on to our third question here. Say you only have the electrical power for a 1,500-watt amp. Is it worth buying a two, three, or 4,000-watt amp and just tuning it down to 1,500 watts until you can afford to upgrade? What are your thoughts on that? That's a very good question. And I think I've touched on that before. When I tested all of the 3,000 watt Korean amps a while back, I showed that some of them were like 95% efficient at 4 ohms. And at 4 ohms they did 1,500, 1,600 watts, whatever. And you're getting a super efficient amp and running at 4 ohms, I think that's a great idea. I honestly think that people should probably be buying a lot bigger amp than they need anyway and just running it, you know, to higher ohm load and not keep quit trying to wire everything down into the ground. Uh, that's just a personal opinion, but yeah, you're getting a lot better efficiency from the amplifier. It's not having to work as hard. You know, a lot of the, uh, the Brazilian amps get ready for the audio to cut out because whenever we talk about them, the audio cuts out. But a lot of the Brazilian amps, they run... You know, er, the voltages and everything are run right at the limits of the components, whereas, you know, it's good to have the headroom. You want to have some headroom space there. So I would say that's not a bad idea. I would just not get that 3,000-watt amp and say, oh, I'm going to use my factory and then try to load it down to 1 ohm. And, you know, you're going to really have some problems, and you're probably going to blow your amp because you're not going to give it the voltage it needs, and you're probably going to start a fire because your electrical wires get too hot because you don't have what you need to be powering it. So yeah. that's what I would say. If you can run it four ohms and do it all day long. Yeah, for sure. And, and the, uh, I guess the main factor would be, can you control yourself from loading it down? You know, are you going to start with your two dual four ohm subwoofers and are you just going to try to handle it by the gain? Are you going to do it by the impedance? You know, what what's your plan for it? And, can you control yourself from getting a little crazy with it? Yeah, just wire it up and get a bigger amp. I mean, they cost yeah. a little more, but these days the amps are so cheap. There's no reason, no reason not to. But you know, in all reality, I think people who understand that if you're doing aftermarket car audio and you're going SPL route and you need multiple thousands of watts for subwoofers, you need to figure in the cost of the electrical system. You need to figure in the cost of your upgraded alternator. Some people get multiple high output alternators and then your wiring 
and then whatever type of battery bank, whether it be lithium, AGM, whatever, caps, all that, or any kind of mix of the three, you need to figure that in. So don't just say, oh, I can afford to get a 3,000 watt amp, but I don't have any money left for wire and alternators and all that. It all has to come together. So if your plan yeah. is, yep, I'm going to do it in the future, then I would say go for it, you know, run it at four ohms and be good. But if you're not sure, then I probably wouldn't do it. Yeah, use use something small until then. Because you don't want to buy that 3,000 watt amp and then get, you know, 50 foot of CCA one aught. When, yeah, it's going to work. You're going to have losses. You're going to have heat. It's Just don't do it. Just Just try to do it right if you can afford it. If not, go a little smaller. Yeah, or plan it out, you know, plan it out in steps. Like we've, we've done uh, podcasts before and videos before we talk about it, how to plan it out, plan out something and that you know that you can buy it in segments. And then if you need to sell an amp to buy another one, you can always work that in. There's, there's a lot of ways to do it, but I, I think just related to his particular question, I don't think it's a bad idea to get a bigger amp, run it at a higher impedance and, you know, you'd be okay. So Rob, uh, I know you probably get this question too. I get it a lot, but the question is always, have you tested XYZ brand model of amplifier? I just got one from a friend and I wonder how much power it does. You get questions like that? I actually get those all the time. And you, and you know what I tell them? I said, I have two buddies on YouTube. One's named, one's named Derek from Williston Audio and the other one's Ryan from budget gen or budget bus and they test almost everything so uh a lot of times you guys have already tested what they asked about so i simply look up the link for them drop the link in the comment or in the message or whatever i just send them over there to watch watch y'all's videos because i've tested very few things compared to the amount that you guys have well and the total number we've tested versus how many amps have been available since you know the 70s and 80s it's a very small percentage. That's why I always laugh when people ask if you tested a certain brand or model. I'm like, have you done a Google search? Because if you do a Google search, Google searches YouTube. And most of the time you're going to be able to find whether you, Ryan, I, Steve Mead, whoever else, Cody that has amp dynos, if they've been tested, you're probably going to find them there. If you don't find them there, try amp-performance.de which is what Rob talked about earlier. It's a German site, but he actually does have a translator built in at the top. You can hit the little UK flag. He'll switch it over to English. And um, although it's, uh, you know, old school English, it's okay. It works for the most part. But um, you can see everything they've tested. And like Rob said earlier, this guy doesn't do videos, but he does do tests. And he takes pictures of the amp, shows uh, gut shots, things like that. And he's tested a lot. I mean, probably yes. a couple hundred. There, It may be even more than that. I mean, there is several amps. You know, that's the first place I look when I'm going to test something. I look at YouTube, see if it's up there. If it's not up there, I consider it. If it's on amp performance, you know, sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. But they have tested a plethora of, of amps, newer and older. Yeah, so... Um... That's what I would recommend. Just do a Google search and see if you can find it. We we test as much as we can. We can't test everything. You know, even just one year, in a lot of cases, even one brand that you know they may have twenty five or thirty different models in their lineup. They can't even do all their one lineup because a cost and b, it's just I don't want to do the same too much even though i've done like tar amps and some other ones way more than other like rockford i've done a lot of rockford amps but that's because i like them unbiased so, <laughs> solution so I, so i got another another question for you is there some sort of document spreadsheet where we can see all the amp dyno tests has it been collected anywhere so me being the old school person that i am rob has seen my collection or some of them you haven't seen all of them clipboard handwritten that's where they all are right now but i do have a kid that's going to be out this summer from school and yeah she's going to be data entry for the summer oh yeah we're man. gonna get some stuff up in google docs and we're going to share it so yeah i'm planning yeah. on doing it um and also um 
what is the page that has the $150 SPL challenge? 12, 12voltmag.com. 12 volt mag. Uh, he has already, Thomas Van has already listed quite a few amp dyno tests there between me, Ryan, Cody, you, Steve Mead, I think all of them. And he links, he, he shows the results, which I'm fine. I don't care. They can show the results, but he also links to each of the videos. So you can watch them. So he's already kind of one step ahead, but he knows how much work that is yeah. just from the little bit that he's done. But I, I'm going to plan on getting some of that up too, because I think that's excellent information. Amp-performance.de though, he has everything already on his website. He's got it uh, organized by letter. Like if you want high phonics, go to H and you'll see all the different amps with H and then you click on the model you want to see and he shows you all the results. So he's already way ahead of us in the way he's doing that. That's the way I would love to do it. Uh, I just have to have somebody help me design the site to have the database built in to be able to do all that. And also I'm, have the time. Yeah, exactly. That's, but you know, for now, the Google Doc on, is in the works. Yeah. And and if you hadn't been on 12 Volt Mag, you know, that uh, he obviously puts a lot of work into that. And you could just look at it and see that, that it's taken a, quite a lot of work to uh, assemble everything. So yeah, you guys should definitely check that out if you're into this kind of stuff at all. For sure. So, Rob, are amp dyno tests relevant? Okay. So I think you already know where we're going with this. Amp dyno tests are very relevant. I understand the difference between, you know, a lot of people want to see in-card tests, which that's that's completely understandable. But that's a lot of work to do to hook up in your car, and the test bench is a lot easier. You're not going to always get the same numbers. We're testing most of the time. All of us at test are using a sine wave on a pure resistive load. So you're going to get, it's a harder test on the amp first. Uh, secondly, you're usually going to get more power that way because it's a consistent power. But in my opinion, when you have them all up there, you all have a standard that you're keeping them on. So you have that to base it off. You know, this is the high watermark for that amp. So it, it's at least a standard, even though you may not get that much performance in your car, or you may, depend on your electrical, you at least have some kind of bench, and they're all compared amongst each other in generally the same way. I think that's a perfect, excellent point there of what you just said, is that people can say they're not relevant, but they're all tested the same way. They're all tested the same way. So I'm, I'm working in the in-car thing now that I have the term lab. And I've got that big, massive audio subwoofer, too, that I'm going to be able to use for the bigger amplifiers. But uh, I, I like the in-car test, too. But the problem is each car is different. You know, each system is going to have a different impedance rise. Um, the dyno test, like Rob said, they kind of show you what the amplifier is capable of. Just because somebody saw a dynamic burst measurement of an audio pipe 1500 watt amp doing 3500 watts, that doesn't mean you're going to see 3500 watts in your car. And, you know, we should probably explain that better. And I, I am now moving forward, but I think in the past it was kind of like, oh, that's so cool. It does so much power at, you know, half an ohm. People think they wire their subs down to half an ohm. They're getting 3500 watts from a 1500 watt amp. Well, that's not true. That's like. Not like a if lightning strikes rating, but yeah. you know it's it's pretty abnormal for it to be that high. Yes, and and you mean and and some people rate their subwoofers to handle. You know the the CEA rated. You need to have that box rise in order to uh, to combat that. He did not just go there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hey, we want we want you all on Rockville if you're listening. Come on here, man. Let's talk about it. Rockville. Got, this is not in our, our document. This is not on the topics to talk tonight. But they got beat up on their live stream. I mean, have you gone back and looked at the comments, Rob? No, Holy I didn't. Holy moly. No, you, you know, me and Jason, we were still on the road to your house. And we were, we were watching it with the sound on like jerks in the Waffle House. So, yeah. That's funny. Yeah, it, it I mean, it was like. 42 thumbs up and like 700 thumbs down or something when I went to look at it last time. And I watched some of it again because I had to. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing. But I had to steal the clip that says, we need more gain. We need more gain. <laughs> I stole that one because I'm going to use that one in some future Amp Dino videos just so you guys know. 
I'm going to use it, Rockville. I'll give you yeah. all a shout out, but I'm going to use that clip because that's just too funny. Yeah, Creative Commons. That's right. <laughs> creative all Minds. Right. Think a lot. But, but yeah, but seriously, Rockville, you guys are welcome to come to the show. I'll send you guys an email. We'll talk. We are professionals here. Nobody's yeah, going to sure. make any fun of you, nothing. You guys, you know, you can explain your side and everything. And anyway, it, it's tough. Yeah. You guys got beat up pretty hard on that. But, you know, you shouldn't have gone after EXO either and said he did something wrong. So that was kind of yeah. like that slap contest, you know. All, that, all that guy with love the, and war. That guy with the big muscles, you didn't want to go against him. That little skinny <laughs> guy, he, he, he hit kind of hard, but the other guy's like, yep, didn't really feel that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, you can hit hard, but you got to have a chin too. So, <laughs> <laughs> so go, going into the install portion of of our uh, questions here, the big three or the big four, as some people do. What do you recommend, four gauge or one not? Is it okay to use four gauge? You know what? What? What's your uh, thoughts on that? I mean, if you're, why? I mean, if you're gonna do it, why would you go four gauge? And please don't use CCA, if you're, even if you're going zero gauge, don't use CCA. I don't even care if you're running like a thousand watt total system. If you're going to take the time to do the big three, go ahead and run one all, you know, OFC. If you can't afford the car audio cable, get the welding cable um, and just do it right the first time. If you're going to spend the time to do it, just do it right. I mean, there's no reason, right, Rob, to use four gauge, I wouldn't think. Yeah, I mean... Four gauge is better than nothing. So if you already have the four gauge, you have the uh, terminals and all that, and you're just going to cut it up and do your, I would say yes. It's it's better than the ten gauge wire you have at best. Sometimes twelve gauge wire that you get on on your stock system. So if that's what you have, sure. But if you're buying it, just buy the one out. Get the welding cable, whatever. But if you already have it, I would say yes. If you already got the four gauge, it's okay. If you have the uh, means to buy something, get the one out welding cable for sure. And a few people in the comment uh, in the live chat have said, I use 4 alt. And you can use 4 alt if you need, you know, need a system capable of delivering that kind of current, go ahead and do it. 4 alt. I mean, that's like pretty much uh, water hose size cable. But if you got, yeah. you need it, need the current, then use it. Yeah, y'all, do you all remember uh, Mead's video where he'd done the 8 alt cable? That was insane. That was insane. I, I don't even know. What is that stuff a foot? Is it like $25 a foot or something? I don't even know. I don't know. You need some for your test rig, man. Yeah, I do. That would be dope. Yep. Shock Industries, if you're listening, need some Adol. Hook me up. Help me out. So, Rob, this one's a little different, and we may have differing opinions. We may have the same one. I don't know. I, I just brought this one up because somebody asked it, and I thought it was a kind of a unique question. So the guy says, head units versus line drivers. He's like, would you be able to tell a difference in your system if you had a Pioneer ADPRS versus, and using that kind of as a high voltage because it puts out about 5 volts, or if you had something like an audio pipe line driver that had 10 volts of output, how would you feel about one versus the other? So you'll definitely tell a difference with a stronger line driver. Your gain's going to be down lower. Um, sometimes you get yourself in trouble with line drivers though, cause you're, you're, you're cranking on that amp a little bit. My personal experience is I don't like to add things into the signal path unless you absolutely have to five volts is plenty. Most amps are, are made to go off two volts. So five volts is, is perfect. Four volts is, is fine. And, uh, yeah, I don't like to add things into the signal path unless I have to because you're always asking for noise at that point, in my opinion. I'd agree. I mean, we didn't talk about this beforehand, but but your response is the same as mine. Keep it simple. You know, the least amount of things in the signal path, the better. And I'm not, I've never used that audio pipe line driver, that 10-volt line driver, but the same way that when I do things with my bench, you know, I try to use – the head unit and go straight to the amp people talked about oh you need a line driver to boost up your voltage before it goes into the amp well adding another device in the signal chain is only going to increase the distortion because each device has got its own amount of distortion so uh, specifically for amp testing i 
like to keep it as simple as possible. In the car, I do the same thing, but it's up to you. You know, if you got a way to try both, you can try both. But I personally, and Rob's already said, would go for, for just the head unit with the high voltage output. That's what I would suggest. Now, somebody yeah. may suggest something different, but you asked me what my opinion was, and I told you. For sure. I mean, and it rolls right into our next question, you know, balanced inputs versus RCAs. Now, in a balanced input, you're looking at around, you know, 16 volts sometimes they top out at. So, in my opinion, you know, I'll just go ahead and, and answer my side, and then you can answer yours. The balanced input, yes, I think it would be better overall, but that is not the standard we ended up with. We ended up with a low-level input. So, you know, it it is what it is. The industry decided, you know, they picked uh, VHS over Betamax. Sometimes we don't always make the right choices as far as quality goes, but uh, yeah, we got RCAs, and I think, yeah, balance would be better. That's what professionals use. That's what sound mixers use. But, hey, it is what it is, and I don't see it changing anytime soon. Yeah, they're, you know, they're able to go long distances with those XLR cables that they use for professional sound and keep the uh, the noise level down because they do have the additional pin in there with the connection. Car Audio tried it for a while, like you said, nobody wanted to standardize that. So we got standardized on RCAs and for the most part, and you guys who are installers and stuff can probably answer this better than Rob and I, but I haven't had to deal with the engine wine and some of the other stuff, things we used to have to with, with RCAs. And it used to be kind of very tricky to find some that were quiet. Nowadays, I don't really have any issues with them. So that's yeah, just my... Seemed, even the cheapest ones are decent nowadays, and, and you don't usually get too much issue with them. Yeah, so that that's kind of what we feel about that. We would love to have balance inputs and a standard and just be able to use the mini XLRs because they're... If you guys have ever seen the mini XLR, I don't have my little headphone um, adapter here to show you but they are as small on the end as the RCA jack and not only that when they click in they actually they have a ear they click into the device so that's nice too because RCAs what do they do in most amps you push them in and sometimes they can pull back out if they're not tight enough or whatever so it would be nice if we had that as a standard but yeah. gosh I haven't even seen people use them really since the 90s no, but, you know, and you know, sometimes the old school monster cables, those RCAs were so tight that they would pull you, sometimes the cheaper RCA jacks off with them straight out of your amp. So, yeah, there's several issues with with uh, RCAs, but like I said, we're just gonna have to deal with them. For sure. So next up, we have a a question that we're hoping to get. Um, a guest on in the future to talk about that knows a lot more about this than we do, but we're going to bring it up anyway because I did have some comments I wanted to, to mention. Can you talk about the lithium technology? And the example would be, you know, the limitless versus the excess power versus the DIY. So I'm going to just give a little bit of spiel, a little bit of knowledge of what I've learned about some of the DIY stuff. There's a group, we'll link it in the video description to a Facebook page. If you guys aren't on Facebook, I understand that not everybody wants to be on Facebook, but there's some good reasons to be there and this will be one. It's a DIY uh, lithium. It's called DIY Car Audio Lithium LTO LIFEPO4 page. Did you get all that, Rob? <laughs> make sure you remember we'll leave a link but anyway you know they talk about all a lot of the different technologies that are being used there's a few that are really popular one i'm not going to talk about because i haven't researched it enough but the c max i think they come out of ford uh hybrids c max sales there are yin long y-i-n-l-o-n-g which excess power is getting ready to start selling their own rebranded yin longs and then the other ones are the headway. So the different there's different technologies or different chemistries involved with lithium. And a lot of people don't want to mess with them because they can't. They're extremely powerful. They're extremely dangerous. If you don't know what you're doing, you can hurt yourself very badly or even worse. But the two I'm going to talk about that I know a little bit about because I've done research, 
The Headway 38120, I think they're called HPs. They're the red ones. Right now they're being sold on eBay as, um, I guess, used sales. There's a guy called Alarm Systems or Alarm something that sells them. But anyway, they are 8 amp per hour, and you get four of them to make a bank. And four of them run about the equivalent of a, an AGM system. So the really cool thing is if you, if you check out, just do a search on YouTube for Headway 38120, and you can watch some videos. And there's one of a guy who's taken a bank of these, the four lithium cells. He's got them charged to like 14.2. I think they want to be charged at as high as 14.5, 14.6, no higher than that. And he puts a 100 amp load. He's got like an inverter. He has a heat gun. And he has some light bulbs. And he turns everything on. And Rob has seen it too. It goes for like almost five minutes with 100 amps drawing continuously to draw draw them down to 10, 10 volts. Yeah, for sure. And and he drew them down pretty quickly, but they bounced back after he stopped it. And it run a little while. They bounced back up to almost 12 volts. So those things were solid. And, and you know, later on in that video, he dead shorts one of them for, I don't know how long it was, but it did not catch on fire, which that was the most impressive part to me. Right. It did get very, very hot and melted some of the plastic on the outside, but it did not catch on fire. He did it for 15 or 20 seconds, dead short, yeah. and it showed it pulled 400, almost 400 amps. It's like 390 amps of current. So um, the Headways and the Yinglongs are supposed to be some of the better ones. Now, so again, the Headway models are designed to be used with your standard battery systems because of the charge voltage is about the same. The Yinglongs uh, let me let me go back a little bit. Headways are the technology is li lithium. Uh, hold on, let me get this iron right. Iron phosphate. Yes, FePO4. That is the chemical term for lithium iron because iron is Fe. PO4 is phosphate. So the lithium iron phosphate cells are designed to work in conjunction with, with AGM. They can be charged and everything along with them. Now, the Yenlongs are LiPo, LiPo, L-I-P-O, that's lithium phosphate. No, I'm sorry, they're LTO. See, I'm even saying this wrong. LTO, that's lithium titanate. I can't even say it right. Titanate? Titanate. I, I, I'm going to let you hang there. All right, I'm hanging. It's, it's LTO. <laughs> yeah. So the LTOs are designed to be charged at a higher voltage so they're somewhere between 13 and a half and 15 and a half volts and they don't recommend that you run those with your AGM systems because they say the uh, AGMs will try to bring them down when they're resting and it's not good so Brad Schluke who is the uh, Mazda 2284 he did a video recently we'll link to that below too where he talked about the different cells and how they worked so he says don't use the yin longs with agms i'm like well how do you use it in your car then you put an isolator or something he's like no i just took my agm out and put a distribution block there and then ran the one alt to the yin longs and then it starts the car it runs the stereo system and everything so the neat thing about them is a bank of six of those right now if you go to excess power site they've got a diy shop site i'll put it in the video description because i can't remember the link but they sell them for 60 dollars a piece those sales you can get six of them for 360 bucks and that is massively powerful supposedly will handle 4,000 watts 4,000 watts for a bank of six so i worked with exo a while back he bought some from somebody else and there's guys that sell them on ebay that are that buy them in this group they buy them in bulk from china and then they resell them and i've got two banks of them that should equate equate to around eight thousand watts so what i'm going to do is i'm going to wire those up on my test bench and i'm going to try to use those as my test bank and not use the uh, agms for a little bit but the reason i talked earlier about having a guest is scotty johnson from excess power set up this separate page this diy page and he sells the uh, empty battery cases so you can put the cells in there 
He also sells the rebranded Yin Longs as Excess Power and says he's going to you know, keep those coming in. And he said he's going to work on the balancers and the straps and all that stuff. I'm not going to get into the balancing part right now because there's a whole different story about having to balance these lithium batteries. And honestly, people just test them and check them. I think once you get them charged up right, they self-balance. But I'm not the expert on that so I'm not don't listen to me what I just said make sure you do your research before you uh, mess with these though because they're very very dangerous they have such high amounts of current output they can really put a hurting on you and I want you guys to be in a chat room not having a hurting and Rob's gonna get some headways right Rob yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna do something with the headways I, I gotta order at least a couple banks and yeah I gotta make some kind of enclosure it'll be fun so the bank of four headways is supposed to support around 800 watts. And the bank of four is only about this long by, you know, their, the, the 38120 is 38 millimeters in diameter, 120 millimeters in length. You can do the English conversion, um, the metric to English conversion standard that way and see what the dimensions are. But I'm going to show them in a future video. I've got some too. Oh, those would be good battery those backup the car. for the Cosell as well. Yes. Because and right a lot of the range. guys on YouTube are using them as solar um, batteries because they say that they're so powerful. You know, they use their solar cells to charge them, and they can run all kind of stuff, you know, and those lithium cells do really well. And they take up a, a third of the space, if if even that. That's right, and the cost now is, is so much less than having to buy all those lead-acid batteries, too. Yep. So, anyway, we're, we'll hopefully we'll have Scotty. I'll, I'll get up with him, and hopefully he can join us in a future episode and talk about it, because I know he's he's obviously the a battery expert, but he knows a lot about this lithium technology as well, and we'll get his opinion on which one you know you should use or which ones you should look at. I thought it was really interesting that he's backing a DIY site. I'm like, this guy's got a battery company. You know, selling batteries. I mean, the lithiums they sell are, what, $2,500 or something for the excess power of lithium? They're crazy so. expensive. Yep. But he's selling these Yinglong banks that are as powerful and they're way cheaper. And it's like, yeah, it seems like there'd be a lot of liability there if somebody hooks it up wrong and hurts themselves. Um, that might that might be on them, though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So anyway, we'll we'll talk with him about that and have some more information. But I'm pretty excited about trying both. And, and as I'm learning... Uh, I will show you guys. I'll try to get you guys um, more information about it as I go along as well. All right, let's go in straight into our next question then. What is it? What defines an SQ system? Now, I'm assuming this is uh, personal, so let, let's hear your take on it. Um, it's got to sound good. Boom. That's all I got. <laughs> no, no SQ. The reason we don't talk about it much, and, and we're going to have some guys on here maybe next week, I think. Rob's already got them lined up uh, from SQology, and yeah. they'll probably answer that a lot better than us. But, you know, to me, it's, um, it's very subjective, the sound quality thing. Um, if it sounds good to me, then it sounds good to me. If you don't like it, then I don't really care because it sounds good to me. But I don't know. That's all I have to say. What do you got to say, Rob? So I think it, if you separate it up into two categories, one, maybe three categories, one, what sounds good to you, what sounds good to most everybody, and then competition sound quality. Like you said, we're going to have Clifton and hopefully Ben on next week from SQology Podcast they can let us know about the sound competition, sound quality competition aspect. But for us personally, it's just, uh, you know, there is a difference between loud and clear and a sound quality. A sound quality to me is something you're going to want to do critical listening to versus just jamming. And and to me, you know, I kind of lean, I, I dabble in, be, in between because sometimes I want to lay on it and sometimes I want to do some critical listening. So... I'm never really on one side or the other on it, but uh, yeah, it's just it's just all personal personal preference on who is uh, making the judgment on what the SQ is. It is, and you know, to me, when I'm riding down the road, if I want to roll the windows down, open the sunroof, whatever, 
I want to be able to hear the lyrics, but I also want to be able to feel something too. So my bass level is probably, you know, five, 10 dB higher than most people like. It's because, you know, I want to, I want to be able to feel it. I want to be able to feel it when I'm riding, you know, Ariana Grande and Taylor Swift, when they be thumping, then I want to be feeling it in my back. So, <laughs> you know, speaking of Ariana Grande, I sent Derek a video. I was, I've got a system in my daughter's, uh, her little trooper and we were driving and, and she, you know, she's got her own little playlist. So here comes seven rings. I hear it. She got the sub cranked up and I was like, all right. I was like, Derek finally got me. So I had to take a little selfie video. Maybe I'll put that up on my channel so y'all can check it out. So, uh, yeah. Good stuff, man. Got him. It's good stuff. We gotta, gotta keep it, keep it thumping. Whatever you like. It doesn't matter. Don't try to impress other people. You'll one day, we'll all grow up and realize that impressing other people is not what we live for. We, we live for impressing ourselves and doing things we like. And if other people like it good, if they don't, then that's okay. Everybody's got their own opinion. Yeah. You don't have to worry about other people's opinion. You live a much better, more comfortable life when you don't worry about other people's opinion. But I'll get off my soapbox. Rob, next question for you. Subs. What about a video showing box tuning and how it affects subs? What's good? What's bad? What happens if the sub is tuned too low or too high? What you think about that? Is that sound a good video? Oh yeah, that that definitely be a good video. I mean, there is so much ground to cover in that area, and that's why I haven't tried to do it yet because you know it's, uh, it decides on me. You know, if I'm going to use Win ISD to show somebody this or I'm going to show a sub unloading. You know, if, if a sub's playing below its tuning frequency, you'll see it unload and it, it'll move. You can't control it. You know, it just kind of moves sloppily. And if, if you're playing too high, you're not too high. It's not really going to do much to you. All it's going to do is kind of just roll off. So, and then it said, uh, focus dark audio in the chat said that EMF did it. So you guys might want to check that out as well. He does pretty good on his tech tech stuff Tuesday. Yeah, absolutely. Check him out because he, he knows a lot more about it than I do. Um, I'd love to learn more about it, but yeah, that's not a video I'll, I'll be doing. But uh, EMF has done one, and Rob Rob is good with that. And Rob just made me a really cool box for the um, Savard HiQ 6.5. And, and made out of, what did you call it, Rob? Alderwood? Alderwood. It, it's between pine and popular. So it's not truly a hardwood, but... I don't know. It's something I wanted to play around with, and I've never made a box out of that type of material. I wanted to see what it would sound like, so I experimented for both of us. Yeah, it's cool. And you did, obviously you didn't have a sub in there because it didn't have any holes in it. But I've already hooked up the Savard in there, and it 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 thumps pretty good, man. Oh, it does. I haven't even finished oh. my box. The top's just sitting off. I hadn't done oh, anything. Yeah, good. yeah, it's nice. I'll I'll show it in an upcoming video. But I did a little comparison of that and the Sundown SA six and a half. And, uh, you know, they're only six and a half inch subs, but man, they they get down pretty good for, for being that small. And it's cool how you, how you did the, uh, the port too. You said it was how long? 12 inches? 29 inches. 29 inches. Good yes. Lord. That and box is mostly port. There's only 0.5 is your airspace for the sub and the rest of it's port. Yeah. And that's okay. It's cool, man. It sounds good. I, um. I'll I'll show it in a future video, but thanks for yeah. throwing that together. And I'm going to show off my box before I put it together so I can show you guys how much of a nightmare it was putting Derek's box together and why I used MDF inside for the ports on mine because, uh, yeah, it was an absolute nightmare doing the ports on your box. Wow. That's cool. Well, uh, yeah, we'll get to that in a future future video on our channel. We'll check that out. So another question that comes to mind is, is it better to use smaller drivers? I think a lot of people are going the six and a half inch or eight inch versus the larger, the 12, 15, 18s. You know, like an example somebody asked was, say you got four six and a halfs versus dual 12s. Well, I'll answer it real quick from my side. You know, it doesn't take a math genius to understand that two twelves is a lot more surface area than four six and a halfs. So, it, it, you know, the thing that's really cool about the subs these days is the six and a halfs and the eights are so beefy, they're so um, powerful that 
you can get by with so much more you can give yourself so much more space so if you've only got room for two eights the two eights that you're hearing today versus the two eights you're hearing years ago as long as you can feed them the power man you can really get some some really good bass out of two eight inch subs but of course you know obviously if you're comparing two twenty dollar twelves versus two hundred dollar eights there's going to be some differences there too if you're talking everything relative like similar magnet structure similar x max all that obviously the bigger subs are going to put out more but if you need trunk space and you know it depends on what you need a lot of these gately audio boxes you guys may have seen underneath the seats of the ford pickup trucks he's making like six six and a halfs across the back and i think maybe four eights in a different design but guys are getting some killer sounds i haven't seen any meters to see how much uh how many dbs are hitting but i'm sure they're hitting probably in the in the low 140s with those with enough power so it really just depends on how much space you need and what you like what kind of bass you like but the new six and a half get down yeah for sure you know back in the day we had to uh get spl by having efficiency having efficient woofers having efficient amplifiers or as as efficient as they could be anyways nowadays we can overcome that by using motor force and just sheer power throwing watts at it power was expensive in the 90s and the 80s it's a lot cheaper now so you can overcome that what what you cannot overcome is the resonant frequency the fs so bigger subwoofers have a lot easier time playing down low if you like the really low stuff now you can make a six and a half do that but you're gonna have to Think about doing a T line or just you know a flat enclosure, so that so that you can do that. But um, yeah, it, it's a matter of space, just like you said, space versus efficiency versus what kind of music you listen to. You listen to rock, six point five is gonna be fine. You're not playing too low. Are you listening to a lot of rebased music? You're probably gonna want to consider a larger driver. Yep, the bigger the better for your low bass. And you'll see in my next video of the OSS meet of EXO's car with the platform five or whatever they were are eighteens. Wow. That was an experience. So uh what's up with those Rockville K nines? Uh well <laughs> <laughs> what is not up about them? Um I think the you know the ending determination in them is they're 500 watt RMS subwoofers and if you use them and they're in that range of power they sound fine I mean I thought they yeah. sounded pretty dang good just a 10 inch in my big SUV with about a thousand watts CA rated power going to them CA rated uh, they uh pew, pew. It, it sounded really good to me, just just oh, yeah. that amount of power. So, again, it's all about expectations. You know, they got really, really slammed for, for saying EXO did things wrong, as they should have because he didn't do anything wrong. They said no sub will handle the amount of power you know, or a certain amount of time, and they were proven wrong with that too. So there's just a lot of, you know, slap contests going on that they're losing. And But overall, those the canines... Uh, the ones I have, I haven't had, of course, the one blue because I blew it up, but keep yeah. the wattage down. They sounded fine. I don't think people want to support them in a lot of ways now because of some of their actions they've done, but that's up to you. You know, I'm I'm good friends with EXO, but I'll continue to buy stuff to test. I'll continue to buy different brands. I'm not going to hold off even buying Rockville stuff. I'll buy Rockville stuff to test in the future too, so... It's all about expectations. 500 watts, yeah. they sound great. Well, and the XO was doing like 140 decibels with that 12, too. So, I mean, that that's pretty impressive to me. But like you said, I mean, he got burned on, on the whole first thing. So he he wanted to make sure to, to really, really test them. So, you know, it is what it is. And on that same note, are you going to test the Destroyer sub? You got one? What you I don't, do? No, I don't have one. Um they were gonna send me one. I, I didn't. I didn't take it yet. So uh, EXO's got one. There's a Parker guy that's on uh, YouTube that's got one. He's been using it for a while. He kind of likes it. 
So uh, Exo, in his last video, posted that he would test it if enough people reply back and said they wanted to see it. He said, otherwise, I won't show it. But Doesn't Ron have one as well? Yeah, I think Ron has one yeah. too. I'm not sure if he's done any tests yet, but yeah, I think I think they sent him one as well. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'll test one or not. I mean, sub is a sub, so if they sent me one, I'd probably test it. But yeah, no plans initially. Yeah, if y'all want to see it, go thumbs up EXO's last yeah. video where he did the Rockville giveaway. He asked a question there, and just let him know that you want to see him test it. Or he if you do... guys want want Big D to blow up the destroyer, yeah. If get, you want to see me blow get another it up, another clapback video. That's right. <laughs> we can do that. We can do it until it burns. So Rob, this is a good one for you because you are a box builder extraordinary. Without the e, just extraordinary. <laughs> what are your feelings about MDF versus Birch versus chipboard versus concrete? I'm just kidding. You don't have yeah. to do the last two. MDF versus Birch. What you say? I, I love them both. I love MDF because it's rock solid. It's the tried and true box building material stuff I've worked with, you know, pretty much my whole life in car audio career. So it's cheap. You can get around $35 a sheet. It's dependable. It's easy to work with. It has a lot of uh, side, uh, you know, the dust is a problem with that, but it's heavy. Birch, make sure you get good birch. If you can get Baltic birch, I mean, if you're rich and you can get Baltic birch or the, the Russian birch, then then you got it made. But you can find decent enough at the local hardware store as long as you look through it. And, uh, yeah, it's lighter. It's just as stiff. The box sound, sound just as good. But it's going to cost you, you know, maybe a third more. It's about $55 a sheet for the cheap stuff, so. It's 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 good to use. You can stain it. It's a nicer wood overall for uh, birch, but you're not going to go wrong with doing either one of them. It just depends on your preference. Yeah, I like personally like the look of the the birch boxes that are stained. Uh, I think they just they're just cool, and they're lighter weight too. You know, MDF is heavy. Yeah. Three quarter inch MDF, especially if you oh double baffle the front, man. That's the difference between picking up my ISO box with the two twelves made out of birch versus that Titan box I made. Now those Titans, they don't weigh but one like one or two pounds each. That's only sixteen pounds right there. But the box I doubled up half inch MDF and glued it together. That thing is freaking heavy. Yeah, like the the one for I'm using in the uh, Ranger right now that's got the Wildpunk twelves. Yeah. That's three quarter inch MDF, and it is a heavy, heavy box. I don't know how much it weighs, but it's probably close to two hundred pounds. And he, and I'll, you've only got girls to help you. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't have anybody to help me throw that stuff up. So, so, um, Rob, have you got? Let's see. If, I was going to see if we had any quick questions in the chat room before we got onto our picks of the week. Because we made it through all the questions, or at least the the ones that kind of raised up to the top of our list. Um, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do our picks of the week, and then you guys in the chat room, if you've asked us a question, go ahead and ask it again, and it we'll see it pop up, and that way we can, um, you know, we can address it. And if we like your question, we'll address it. If we don't like your question, then maybe not. Um, so you got a pick of the week, Rob? You know, or you yeah, want to go first? Yeah, no, I got them. I'm going to I'm going to pick myself for pick of the week. I've got new stickers. These are clear stickers. They're not white like the other ones, so even though they have a white background right now, they're clear. They're much cooler, a little bit more expensive, but uh yeah. So and how can somebody get fact, one of those? So you can just go to my latest latest video. I have it in the comments. You can check it out uh how to get them. But also I'm going to do a giveaway. I'm going to do a live stream here pretty soon. We'll get some away, get them sent out get people checking them out cool what's your pick the one i'm gonna pick this week is i'm not sure it's really car audio related it just depends on you know what you like to do the this is a wireless microphone system from Rode. it's called the wireless go and unfortunately the two the transmitter and the receiver are actually out in my garage so i don't have them here with me to show you how small they are but these things are tiny usually 
a, wire, a good wireless system that you're using with your camera or your phone or whatever going to be big money five six hundred eight hundred dollars for Sennheiser or one of the well-known brands this is 199 200 bucks and it comes with the transmitter uh, and the receiver the receiver has got a VU meter built on it, both of them it has batteries built into both you charge them with the USB cable the transmitter part can actually clip on and it's got a mic built into it you can use the mic built into it or you can run a uh, Rob has shown it before but the little purple panda that we like uh, lapel mic you can hook this up hook it into there and then hook the other part up to your camera or your phone however you want to record and I've been really happy with the sound quality I've got out of this and it's like I said 200 bucks very lightweight I like it the wireless go by road again a lot of people here probably don't care because they don't need stuff like this but people that are doing YouTube and that want to do better audio for their videos take a look at the road wireless go especially if you're live streaming is that purple panda you can plug it straight into your phone but uh you're gonna be you know you got a cord attaching you so it makes it makes it tough yeah you got to be careful yeah so i did see a question come in about your opinion on the different class of amplifiers what makes brazilian boards different Base out, I would recommend that you go see our friend Sam at Bear Vids. He does a lot of amplifier repairs. And he's done a complete teardown to show, um, I can't remember if it was a tar amps or a um, Banda. But he talks about the components they use and why they're smaller, you know, all that stuff. And the full bridge versus the half bridge, he talks about all that. So I would recommend go see Bear Vids and just do the video about Brazil amps. Go on his page, Bear Vids, on YouTube and do a search on the channel for uh, Brazil or Brazil amps. And he talks about it. He's got a very good explanation. He's good about that. So uh, how many watts of total amps in your daily drivers? I, I could speak on mine right now. I, it's, it's just a mess. I've got the Sony... Uh, I think it's 75 watts by four channels for the front stage. And I've still got that little Polk PAD in there for subs simply because I didn't change it out. So, you know, I'm running under a thousand watts, like 700 watts, something like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm about the same. I'm a punch 200 DSM on my JL Audio 10W7. Been using that for a while. And honestly, uh, I'm going to get around to testing out the other amps. I want to do that. And I was going to use, I bought a separate AGM battery to hook up so I could put a bigger amp in there. But then once we got these headway cells, I'm thinking those are what I'm going to put in there uh, for trying a bigger uh, amplifier. But I've also got a new subwoofer coming. A company has made a box and they're going to put it in, put their subwoofer in there. And I'll talk about it in a future video. Again, guys, you know, we we have requests all the time to test stuff and it's expensive to buy all this stuff so if a company contacts me and says hey we want to send you this no strings attached you try it out it's yours whatever in most cases i'll be like fine i'll try it out but there's never the expectation that i'm going to accept something in return for saying something good about it because i'm an opinionated person on the things that i use and that's what you guys kind of expect from me so that's why I probably don't have the sponsors I should have to do my channel because if I had sponsors, then I would have to pimp their products. And that brings another difficulty in here trying to make this a full-time income. But just so you know, I do get stuff for free occasionally. In this example, to be a subwoofer in a box. And uh, I'm just going to try it in my car and tell you guys what I think. So when things like that happen, it's not because I'm selling out or anything like that. It's because, hey, they want me to try it. They want me to show it on my channel. There's some value there, I would think, with the number of, of viewers and subscribers. So I'll take advantage of it. And you guys yeah. get advantage, too, of being able to see what my thoughts are. And, and I'll one-up you there. I'm I'm fixing to uh, do a rebuild in the Suburban. So any manufacturers out there, you know, 
they if they want to make it in the suburban, holler at me. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, Jonathan Price did a really good video a couple, few years ago where he talked about being sponsored because everybody's big thing was, oh, I want to get into car audio. You know, I want the subwoofer manufacturer to give me some subs and this amplifier manufacturer to give me some amps because I'm going to, you know, set up a competition system and I'm going to go to all these shows and all these people are going to see it. Well, there's one thing to talk about doing something and there's another thing that if you already have an established community kind of like I feel that Rob and I have when you know we're involved with manufacturers and stuff uh, you know we have an, uh, an audience so that we can show off and maybe this particular manufacturer doesn't have that broad of an audience that sees their product well when we when we're able to show it then it helps them obviously because Somebody may never never heard of this brand that I'm going to show off. And then it helps us and you guys too because you get to see it and then we get to try it out. There's just all kind of benefits. So I know I'm kind of going off on the side jag, but just so you guys understand, things like that happen. Yeah. And manufacturers, Massive Audio sent me that big subwoofer. It's because I'm using it. I'm testing it out. I'm trying it with big amplifiers. That doesn't change my opinion. I'm not going to say anything good or bad about just because they gave it to me it's it's opinions and you guys send us stuff well sure we'll try it out yeah so i got another one either one of you running a dsp right now the only dsp i'm running is built into the adprs i run active on it that's it i've got a mini dsp over here i still need to play with and uh yeah it's just so much work it's so much work to do that stuff because i'm gonna want to make a video on it and it you know how it is. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way as Rob. I'm running um, the ADPRS as well. I've thought about changing it out, but every time I think about changing it out, I just, I don't like, I really wish they had a double den that had a volume knob that was as good as the ADPRS sound quality wise. Um, and I haven't found it yet. So if anybody knows one that's reasonably priced, let me know. We'll try it out. But I like the ADPRS. I don't, get crazy with all the settings and I don't change, you know, seating position and all that stuff for me. I let the middle of the car sound good. Yeah. I just stick my head over when I'm, when I'm rolling like this, you, you got to get in the zone yeah. for those, for those of you on audio podcast, Derek just leaned over and he's doing like the Cadillac, like the limp arm. It's Cadillac. the gangsta lean, man. Get it right. Yeah. Told you I'm West side on the East side. West side till you die. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say we thank our super chats and uh close out and go on to the uh, after show yeah let's do that all right, all right so it looks like we got some more oh, added real quick my mic i've got them i've got them written down all right you you go one i'll do the next because i got several of them too all right mr brad newsom thank you shout out to you always helping out and brad is at legends of car audio you can find him in fact, if you just go to legendsofcaraudio.com, it'll take you to his eBay page. He's got all kind of old, new old stock, all kind of old school stuff. Lots of cool things. Check him out, legendsofcaraudio.com. Uh, Brandon Hanna. Thank you, Brandon. Appreciate your Need support. Joaquin Juarez, always on there, on the Patreon as well. He, he's always in there. He's, he's the man. Uh, John Olds. John, thank you for your support here of our show. We greatly appreciate it. And then Brandon Hanna hit us double time. So special shout out, man. That it means the world to us. We we said it in the beginning, but yeah, it really helps out. Yeah, I think if he accidentally clicked it and did it again or, you know, his kid accidentally bumped it and, and bumped the number up. Sorry about that, man. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> uh Rick Quattlebaum. Rick is a subscriber to both of our Patreons. Rick is um He's a big supporter in the community. You know, he shows up to the Texas meets. He's uh, he's always engaging. He's always here in the chat room with us whenever he can be. And I uh, appreciate it, Rick. Thanks yeah. for your support. Then we got Mr. Mark Crowley, runs the Car Audio Vice Facebook page. And this dude, I don't know where he finds the time, but he helps. You won't see one uh, question on there that he didn't comment on and try to at least have some sort of answer for him. So if, if you guys need any help, go to that page. Yeah, and he keeps it. He keeps people in line too. Uh, oh, Mark, yeah. Mark is real good about that. 
he don't do, play. He doesn't take any crap, so yeah. but he is very helpful too. Thanks, Mark. And if you want to step to him in person, he's a big dude too. Yes, he is. Quick. Yes, he is. <laughs> The next one, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess your name up, and I know we've talked before. You told me how to pronounce. It. I think it's Dionisio, but I'm gonna call you Nicho. Tapiz, T-A-P-I-Z. He's actually local here in North Carolina. Got a really cool 84. I hope I got that right. Ford Rain, uh, Ranger, and I've shown it before in one of my videos, and it's a super cool system. He's got an old school rock for Power 1000. He's got some T2. 15s in a blow through box hits like 154 or something with a power 1000 but he's got all old school wow. amps I, I remember sweet. that one as well then uh mr james smith hit us up as well thanks james smith and uh mr corkle is it jim jim corkle i think so yeah yep, and then uh mr gene nava hit us up he's a patreon supporter of mine as well he's always on there and uh yeah, we're always chatting back and forth about things, so Gene is the man. Well, I saw a couple late ones here. Uh, Bill Berg hit us up. Thank you, Bill. Yep. Bill's a Patreon supporter as well. Thanks for that, buddy. And then uh, Brad hit us up again. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, Brad, also, pre appreciate those subs, too. I'm going to show them off, and uh, I've already shown them on my Instagram page. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen Instagram Go to Instagram.com slash Old School Stereo. You can see some of the purple uh, ecstasy subs. Oh, those subs are – those were cool subs. Aren't they really cool? Yeah. And uh, Brad gave me a couple of those, so I'm going to show them off <clears throat> in a future video. But I've already shown them in Instagram if you want to see pictures of them. they got a purple powder-coated yeah. basket. I think they're eminence-made, right? They like yeah, eminence think, subs. Yeah, I think for sure. Oh, and, and he gave me a banner, a cool rock for banner. I hadn't even got to show off yet because it's so big. It's going to have to go in the garage for sure. Sweet. Yeah, but right. thank, thanks, guys. We appreciate, again, the super chats and everything you're doing to support here is going toward, we put it in a bucket. We use it either for paying for the storage for the show or for future software to make it better. We're going to continue to get new, interesting members of the community to join us here so you don't always have to look at my bald head and, uh, and listen listen to Rob make uh, smart back-of-the-room comments like he does. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i did what else am i here for and there's going to be one day coming up soon that you're not going to be here for an episode we'll talk about that yeah. after so just remind me of that so i can make sure we got that date properly All right. so again everybody listening make sure you check us out youtube.com slash 12e talk if you have any show ideas if you have anybody that you know that would be, want to be on the show who's in the industry that could help us out in any way 12vtalk at gmail.com. Shoot us an email. If you have pictures that you want to share with us, if you have links to a video you did on YouTube of your system you want to show us, send it 12vtalk at gmail.com. It's the best way to get with us right now. And thanks everybody for listening on Spotify, Google Play Music, and all the other places where we're available. Uh, Apple Podcasts as well. And that's all I got. Rob, you got anything else? No, oh, man. That's it. Okay. Thanks, John Olds, for the late super chat. Yeah. Wow. Set for the second one. You demand. Killing it. All right, guys. So those in the chat room, stick around. We'll hang out with you for a few minutes. Those listening to the podcast, thanks as always for joining us. Until next week, we'll see you then. Yeah. Peace out. I'm trying new atros. <laughs> we'll, we'll find, we'll see what sticks. Yeah, we got to make a new one, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, you guys are killing it. Greetings from Holland. Yes, greetings, Holland. What time is it in Holland? I don't have my world clock up right now. Uh, seems like it'd be really late. I don't know. Let's see who we got there. Oh, Mark's in there. Car Audio Fab. Fab Kitchen in the house. Yes, sir. Yes, Mike Nichols, owner of US Acoustics. That would be... A great one, Brad. I will, um, if you oh, have an email sure. address or something for him, I think I'm friends with him on Facebook, but I would love to talk with him. I've, I've had several uh, amp designers before. Uh, a lot of them seem to be very introverted and don't want to talk. Rock, Rockville Sam in the chat. Rockville Sam in the house. What's up? 
Yeah, but that that is a good idea. Like, if you guys have no people in the industry or whatever, and you got a contact, hit us up. You know, we'll try to get them on the show. Eric said, "Spring meet where when?" Uh, she done. We did it already, dude. It was uh, late. It was May eighteenth. I gave some explanation as to why it wasn't highly publicized. Uh, you can listen to our last 12 volt talk show. We talk about it some. You can go back and either listen to the archive or check it out on YouTube. Where's the Texas meet? So we may have some changes to the Texas meet, but we're still going to have it. We got plenty of time if we need to change locations. Yeah. We will let you guys know as soon as we know. We'll it, it'll be somewhere in the same area, the uh, Ennis, Kaufman, Scurry, Texas area. So about an hour outside of Dallas. Yep. I'll be flying into Dallas. Yep. It'll be good times. Let's see what else we got here. My ADS old school system will represent in Dallas. That'll be fun. Add them all. Can we see the Crockville Destroyer get smoked? <laughs> Almost 3.30. Is that 3.30 a.m. promo 1.30? I would think it probably is because you guys are, yeah, six six hours ahead of us in Eastern Standard Time. There's a new uh, competition going on that Howard Cantor's putting on. I think it's called MSQ. Rick probably knows. Uh, Rick Quattlebaum. But they're doing some shows local to me. Well, within a couple hours. I'm going to try to make two or three of them if I can. If you are going to be in the Arkansas, Oklahoma area, I might, I might see you there. Sweet. Please do a test on the Fusion 4K surfboard amp. <laughs> oh man, Brad! Yeah, you forgot to. I think you forgot to bring one of those. As we talked about it, did he have to end up getting them repaired? I know he ran them for a little while. But he's probably still in the chat. Because I, I didn't he run them in the Scion for a little while. I think so. I know there's some people in the chat room that are trying to uh, get attention and 99% of y'all are behaving and being very nice, but some of you, sorry, there's been a couple I've had to can. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is not the place to come for getting your attention. We're, we're here to help everybody. Um, yeah, thanks for the thanks for the shout out, guys, about the podcast. We probably need to get us like an intro song or something. We're only on the forty fourth week of doing this, forty four episodes. Yeah, I, know, I, I could I could sing a solo. I could sing some Ariana Grande. I want me beat bo like beatboxy man. Yeah, you should and beatbox. Then you come in. That's right. That'd be the intro. I could do the high note after you yeah. did the beatbox. I can't really beatbox. I'm I can't do a high note either. Note, so <laughs> <laughs> that would be oh, that would be a guarantee that people would stop this and say, <laughs> yeah. "What the?" They just, I'm out. Yeah, what that thing is Conway huge, Brad. Stuff. I think it would be way. It would be expensive to ship that thing. I should have reminded you. I forgot all about it until just now when somebody asked about it. I do have one. Yeah, he did run three in the Scion then. 12 volt talk, 12 volt talk. We're about the 12 volt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Wiki, wiki. Oh, the audio control DMRTA. I got one of those in. I'm, I'm going to play around with it some. The thing I'm kind of interested in is the, uh, the test tone function of it. So I want to try it and see. I don't know, Mark, you, you've played with it some, but I don't know if you've tested the volt, the RMS voltage output, how much it puts out 
of that unit itself and I'm going to test it with my THD meter too to see how clean it is because it's possible that that unit could be cleaner than the Alpine and it would be better to use that as a uh, test unit instead of using the Alpine. So I'm going to try that out and see how it works but the ability to use it as like an O-scope and even an RTA and SPL meter all that stuff yep. is pretty cool and and I'm planning a future video. I've already done one that I uh, compared the uh, SSA APM2, which is the little Bluetooth uh, meter that attaches to your phone, and the Term Lab. And I show the difference in the, the power between the two, or the difference in the dB, sorry, decibels. So Rob was borrowing the mini, is it called a mini SPL? Is that what it's called? Yes, it, it's the SPL Labs Mini SPL. Yeah, the SPL Labs Mini. That's the one that plugs into your cigarette lighter. So we're gonna. I'm gonna try that my best to test all four. So the Mini SPL, the Term Lab, the uh, SSA, and the audio control. Now the audio control uses a microphone, not a pressure sensor. But it will still be interesting to see what the difference is. Yeah. In the That's DB only SPL. one one forty dB mic, right? Maybe I, I, I'll just I'll just do like a one thirty or one thirty five test. Yeah. So I won't go too high. I'll just keep it low enough where they'll all be supported. But I think that'd be interesting. Yeah, that'd be cool for sure. Yeah, to to actually, you know, it would be really cool to get the old SA model and do old school versus new school. You know, That's true. And, and actually see what it was doing with the one sixty dB mic. I think. Steve McIntyre might have a 160 dB mic. Oh, wow. So. Well, that mic could still be used with the new, uh, the yep. DMRTA. Mm -hmm. It's just a XLR plug, right? Yep, yep. yep. Show sure would. Maybe we'll see. So you said the one I got's a 140? I think, I'm not sure. Only, only the look. cool kids have that DMRTA. You, Mark's got one. Five Star's got one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, sometimes sometimes oh, we get the fun stuff. 3.30 a.m. here in the Ooh. Netherlands. He's a real OG right there. Audio control is mostly for SQ. Yeah, but man, I tell you what, that 1500 watt amp they have, if you, if you don't need any, much more than, was it 1800 I think is what it put out, and you need a small amp, that yeah. thing is built well. They build all their stuff here in the U.S. They assemble it here. They 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 have as many U.S. parts as they can. They obviously have to import some. There was a really, and we didn't talk about it on the show, but there was a really good interview with um, the owner of Audio Control. He was interviewed by, was it Fox Business? Did you see that, Rob? Did I send it to you? Mm -mm. I don't think I did. So... Uh, his name's Alex. Help me out, Mark. I can't remember his last name. Anyway, he was uh, interviewed by Fox Business about he. They're actually a U.S. manufacturer. They manufacture all their products in Washington State, but they have to import some of the parts, some of the circuit boards, um, some of the. Alex uh, Camera says. Yeah, Alex Cameron. Some of the components they have to import from China. So the idea of the tariffs was when we import stuff in that's fully assembled, there's tariffs added on. But the way Alex described it is they're, ha they're adding tariffs on the components that audio control needs to create or to complete the, um, to complete the building of their products. And, yeah, amplifiers and, and all kind of stuff. They make really high-end home audio stuff, too. If you guys haven't seen the video that we did with, with Chris Bennett, you need to go back and check that one out. That was a really good interview. He um, He's very knowledgeable and very knowledgeable about audio control products as well. But they've been around so long, you hate to think that you know they're going to be facing uh, some challenges coming up because they're the they should be the model you know, based on what the government's trying to do, trying to make 
there be more manufacturing here. They're already doing it. They just can't get everything from the United States. And the things they're bringing in, oh, yeah, we're going to tariff that. Well, that you're hurting, you know, people that are trying to do it right. And that's I don't think that was the intention of those tariffs. The intention was if you get a finished product coming in, yeah. then, you know, you'd be taxed. But And our industry so small, I don't think that that's that even – popped up on their radar at all they're thinking about cell phones and this and that and yeah. tablets and computers and they have to know that we don't we don't even have the machines anymore i mean way back in the 90s when clinton was in office we shipped a lot of that stuff over to china and mexico and everything and taught people how to use their stuff and then we came home and lost our jobs and it's taken all these number of years you know, for us to say, huh, well, maybe we should bring that back here. Well, you can't do it overnight. It took 20 years for everything to, you know, filter over there. So it's not going to happen immediately. All I got to say is if you guys are used to buying cheap electronics, you better be getting used to paying more because yeah. the prices are going to go up. Not only electronics, you got to think about refrigerators, you know, of course that is electronics, <laughs> uh, washers and dryers. Anything that has electronic components in it, the prices are going to. Yep. So, so if you're if you're in the U.S. Uh, and you you want to get into business, start making them uh, MOSFETs and transistors. <laughs> That's right. Stamp them out. Yep. On a machine that you don't even have. Maybe you can use a MakerBot to make one. You're gonna have to do it. Got to adapt. It's like the 3D printer that prints itself. Audio control not meant for SPL testing. <laughs> it's got an SPL meter. Yeah, it's more for hey. level testing. Hey, but I, I just want to compare the difference of what you know one is versus another. I understand it's not that's not the design feature of it. Uh, and it's only designed, I think, even to go up to like 145 dBs only. Yeah, that's yeah, way loud for us old people. Well, back in the day, we used to test exclusively with audio control. Mm -hmm. The SA 3020. Oh, besides the B&K, which the B&K was, was always the harder mic, but yeah, this this one's a little bit different. Tariff's going to hurt Walmart. They're not going to hurt Walmart. They're going to hurt you, brother, because I can guarantee you that Walmart is not going to pay that additional cost without sending it right on to you. So I'm just telling y'all, get ready. That your cheap stuff is getting ready to. <laughs> yeah, man, I could actually make the America amp in America. <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know about that. Took some you, shots. I, I think you guys need to remember, and uh, you know, you need to think back to the '90s when we did have stuff made here, and how much it cost. Okay. A uh, thousand watt amp was a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, a thousand watt amp today, a hundred dollars. You're gonna have to expect the reason these tariffs are put in to try to get more things here, right? So if this thousand watt amp is made in the U.S., it's gonna be at least several hundred dollars. It, it, I don't think it'll go back up to the thousand dollar range, but I yeah. think this stuff is going to hit people and they're not going to even realize the changes that are going to happen. I don't even think it's going to go that far. It, it's not about that. It's just about, you know, he, he's a negotiation guy. They've got to use some tactics to get, to get the deals back. So I think that's the way it's going to be. Well, we're, we're in a huge trade trade deficit too. Yeah. And, you know, China is buying up a lot of the United States because of the money that we owe them for all the crap that we buy for the dollar stores and everything, yep. you know, that we that, that we buy over here. So we need to be more self-sufficient. I've said this before. I don't like the fact that we have to have things imported in. Yeah. You know, I think if we could be self, self-sustaining self the way we used to be, that would be good. Now, we couldn't do everything here, but we could do a lot of stuff. And now... We do very little. Yep. It's just not financially feasible for us to do things here anymore, manufacturing-wise. I mean, you remember all the textile plants back in the 
was it late 90s, early 2000s? I just remember every night on the news, I'd see something or another textile manufacturer plants being shut down, being moved to Mexico or moved to Thailand or whatever. Yeah. And the impact, you know, you don't think about it right then of what it's going to be, but it dried up a lot of towns, a lot of people lost jobs, you know. People oh, yeah. got to have work. Yeah, for got sure. Got to have stuff to do. That's why I think it's, it it should be temporary. We might temporarily see prices rise, but I hope that it all, I think it all even out at the end of the day. Well, we we can't compete price wise with China. Yeah. Because China sets their own value for their currency. They underprice everybody, everything. They've mm-hmm. got you know the cheapest labor known to man because they in a lot of cases you know i'm just this is a generality here but you know everybody's heard about the sweatshops and everything but the the labor there is so cheap but yeah i don't know man it, it, i'm just afraid that it's like it is now you know here we, they're saying don't let the the people from mexico come into the country to work on the farms and do stuff but then we don't have people that are actually living here that actually want to do the work anymore so the farmers are like we have to have that population so the work can get done <laughs> because no everybody else wants to sit on their bum and you know get their government check yeah yeah it's got to be balanced back it will never so someone's always someone's always going to get hurt from it so. people you got to get to work stop being lazy do something. We got we yeah. were way off a topic here, didn't yeah. we? Not really. It's political China. ramblings with twelve. It's not political. Talk it's not political <laughs> in any way. It's everything's simple, political nowadays. It's simple economics is all we're talking about here. <laughs> Stuff that goes way back to the nineties and people didn't understand yeah. how it was gonna affect us twenty twenty some years later. <sighs> Okay, yeah, we're getting a lot of handy in the chat room. (laughs) (laughs) All righty. Guys, we're going to end it for the chat here. Thank you, as always, for joining us. Thank you for your super chats, for engaging us, for providing us the questions for tonight's show. We'll have a guest next week, SQology, and then we'll try to get some additional ones coming up. Peace out. Later. We out of here.